When you first meet someone, you often ask them an array of different questions, but most of the time, it goes like this. Hi, how are you? My name is Shay. What do I do? Well, I do theater. And when I answer this question, I'm usually left with one of two responses. Either they look me up and down and politely say, eh, that makes sense, or they ask me, how do you do theater? How do I do theater? Well, this is a question I get more often than not, but one that I never truly know the answer to. You see, I believe theater is just one of those magical things you gravitate towards. For me, at the age of six, in my first community theater production of Oklahoma. You could say my life was changed forever, but it wasn't the type of change that just all of a sudden erupts in your face. But instead, as cliche as it sounds, I do believe a special place was set aside in my heart to be filled over the course of my career in the arts. I believe this happens to every artist in every art form. Now, if you didn't know already, theater borrows from a wide variety of skill sets and applies them to each of their productions. It takes science, technology, financing, management, and so much more. Each of these skill sets is so incredibly important, yet so vastly different. It allows each of these creatives to collaborate collectively with respect for each of the individual skill sets needed. Without our technicians and designers, we wouldn't have a functioning set, lights on stage, or even be able to hear our performers. Without our financing and management teams, we wouldn't even have a venue to perform in or an audience to perform in front of. It takes a village, and as a little six-year-old just glad he's finally in the spotlight, you don't notice how large of a village it takes. So continuing to grow up in the theater and ambitious to produce my own shows one day showed me just how inaccessible a lot of the opportunities were to grow as an artist, especially as a young artist. Now, in a study done by the Educational Theater Association, only half of public schools provide daytime theater programs, and only 28% of rural and high poverty schools have daytime theater programs as well. This lack of theater accessibility in K-12 education forces a lot of students to seek opportunities outside of school, most of the time in the form of community theater. Community theater is a chance for all walks of life to not only enjoy a show, but be a part of one. 52% of most community theaters are funded by earned revenue, the rest coming from individual donors and investors. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, and that art form that was so consistent in my life was taken away, it gave me, and all of us, time to reflect on our lives and the difference we were looking to make in the world. During this break, I also discovered an incredible novel by Roald Dahl entitled Matilda. In Matilda, a girl gifted with keen intellect and psychic powers uses both to deal with her crude and distant family and free her kind teacher from their sadistic headmistress. We see Matilda as the only logical one in many of her situations, despite being just an elementary school student. When you are first cast in a show, you are only given the dialogue of a script, and you are challenged to interpret the emotions of your character and feel them not only as that character, but as your own individual self. In this novel, Dahl brought some incredible quotes to light, but there has been one that has always stuck with me. Matilda's strong young mind continued to grow, nurtured by the voices of all of those authors who had sent their books out into the world like ships on the sea. It gave Matilda a hopeful and comforting message. You are not alone. This quote sparked something in me as a director that I would like to call the Matilda theory. You see, even amongst all of the abuse from her parents and headmistress at school, Matilda turned to the fictional stories of the world to escape the immense darkness around her. When you are first cast in a show, you must also be completely vulnerable to figure out how or why your character will react to certain situations. This is exactly what Matilda was forced into doing due to the lack of care around her. To find the motivation for your character, you must first define the reasons for their actions. That is a beautiful chance to not only empathize with yourself and the character that you are portraying, but to empathize with an incredibly diverse world around you, where each human being has their own story to be interpreted. That was the type of change I was looking to make in the world. And so, I never stopped to look at my community and realize how little opportunities there were for young artists in the area. 
So I gathered some close friends and colleagues, and we started exactly what we thought our community needed. And in the summer of 2020, we saw unfolding right before our eyes our inaugural production of The Wizard of Oz in a small school gymnasium. From there, this minute idea quickly spiraled, and we have been continuing to create art with all of the Bixby community for over four seasons now. It is a place for all of Tulsa's young artists to receive quality theater education, regardless of their financial setbacks, transportation needs, and more. From the first audition day to our closing night warm-ups, I see each of our students transform into their own version of Matilda. More specifically, in last summer's production of, you guessed it, Matilda the Musical, I saw the Matilda theory take a new formation in my students. This was the type of show that called on a lot of our program's younger talents and allowed them to shine. Can anybody guess who was completely outraged by this idea? Well, the older students, of course, because they wouldn't be in the spotlight. But little did they know, this experience was going to completely transform them, not only as performers, but as individual human beings. Over the course of that summer, I saw these students not only learn how to occupy a less demanding role sufficiently, but also empathetically share their knowledge with the younger students around them. I knew then this little vision wasn't just creating the minds of the next Broadway star, but the minds of empathy-driven individuals. So, next time you see an advertisement for your local community theater putting on a show, I encourage you to go out and support, and know that by directly supporting your local talent, you will be directly contributing towards the movement of arts education for all. Thank you.